This is heating up, and while we're waiting for the bell housing from a second gen RX-7, we're gonna take the one that we already have out of the three rotor. It's exactly what we need for the Corvette. I'm gonna take this off, as well as the torque tube, and we're taking them over to build the Apex. For those of you familiar with FDs, they use the exact opposite type of clutch as a Turbo 2. A Turbo 2 pushes the clutch in, whereas the FD pulls the clutch out. You have to lock the throttle bearing to the clutch. This one makes it so much simpler, more like most common clutches, extremely serviceable. Everything is pretty easily accessible. Just like this, I can pull this is the slave side right here. I can pull it out in a matter of those two bolts. There is the throttle bearing right here. There you go. It really is just a bearing. So when you push this in, it's touching the clutch, which is spinning, but this is staying still because it's touching the bell housing, and that's a very straightforward piece of equipment. This is an eight bolt bell housing. A lot of FCs came with six bolts, and the, of course the eight bolt being the general consensus that eight is better than six and is stronger, that's what we want. So since I've never taken this off of this one, I, it was already attached to that plate on the T56 Magnum, we put this jack here because it looks like the transmission is going to fall over the moment I get the plate off. Perfect. All that was necessary. The adapter for the torque tube unfortunately is different than that adapter there. I wish I could just buy that and call it a day. That is not the case here. Oh wow, look at that adapter even has room for a different type of throwout bearing, but that's not what we're using. Our adapter is definitely gonna have those seven at least, those eight bolts threaded in those spots, and there'll be another set of bolts for the torque tube six bolt setup on the other side. God damn it, there's something in my throat as I'm trying to... <coughs> something that bothers me See that input shaft spline? See how long that is? Tons of splines, nothing to worry about there. I need to see this on the end of the torque tube. Something like that, give or take an inch. There, that popped in the correct spot. This is with those two pieces almost touching. I and mean, really, the, the end of this has to be flush, so it's gonna have to be more like, more like this. Look at that, there we go. So the question now becomes, what clutches could support that much threading? Which really, I think we're actually fine, because that would be almost identical on the other car. Unless this is too long. Whatever, we'll, we will find out very quickly. So to put it all together, we are not going to be using this $3,000 billet steel CNC machined scatter shield, basically some sort of certification bell housing. We are not going to use this because this is a different size than the T2. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand why they made it slightly smaller because I can't fit a quad plate for the four rotor, but we'll, we'll get into that later. Let's take that one. We'll put it on here. Look at where the first disc on the clutch, that needs to be on splines. So you know, the, the disc for the clutch needs to be on these splines fully. If it's not, we're gonna have to trim this down. This pilot bearing is way longer on this one than the other one, so we might have to trim this down a little bit, just kind of turn it down, and then that adjusts the height of the adapter plate. The reason that bothers me is look at from here straight down, that's almost flush with the bell housing edge, and that's what we have to maintain for, as far as the engine's concerned on the two rotor. If this sticks out too far, we're screwed. So that means threads start about that much in, like an inch in to the depth of this bell housing has to be threads. It's so different than just simply going to an online retailer and saying, I want a spec stage one. Oh, do you do stage two? There is no stages when you're doing custom work like this. This is literally just, can I solve this with the maximum amount of meat and potatoes possible to make this work? So lining it up right there is the point where the bearing at the very top bottoms out inside of the flywheel. I, I think we'll have to trim that down and bring this down to about here. That's the sort of stuff that you have to use and, and think about when you're custom machining these sort of parts. There is no guide, there is no stages. Uh, it gets scary, but then after a while you just suck it up and just get it done. And I, I do also wanna say that, you know, you see a lot of other YouTube car projects. 
A lot of them are just buying parts off the shelf, replacing parts that exist. Even though this is just a Corvette and it's just a rotary engine to, to some people, I, I think a lot of you appreciate this, but this project requires engineering. And uh, as much as I love the fun online persona of goofiness, there's a lot of thought that goes into what looks so simple. Oh yeah, just get a clutch. Oh really, what's the offset of the clutch? What spline are you gonna use? Because these are not FD splines. These are not Turbo 2 splines. These are splines for a T56. And again, heights, depths, all that has to go into play just to make one piece of metal adapter to just connect it all up magically. All that just for one one inch thick slab of aluminum with the right dimensions. So here is the last issue of the hour. These two bolts scare me in the sense of this one might actually not get a bolt in it. And the reason why is it overlaps. You can see that the ground, if you can see through that hole, that pretty much overlaps between this bolt and this bolt. Why does that matter so much? Well, like you saw on the other plate, I have to thread the hole for this bolt. And having both bolts going in from opposite sides, they're literally going to be in the exact same space. This one's not a problem, this one's not a problem, this one's definitely not a problem, not a problem, a little bit of concern, not a problem, not a problem. So I can definitely hit six out of the eight without a problem. And because this side has six, if I make sure we don't have the weakest link, these two don't have a problem. If I choose this side, then these two don't have a problem. And then this one doesn't have a problem. So six on one side and five on the other. Look at the weakest link. What's the weakest link? The side of five. Well, we can't add more than five to this. And we already know that that's pretty damn solid for a Corvette with a lot of torque. Six on this side really can't be that big of a deal. So we're gonna get this all loaded up now, throw it in the insight, take our bazooka over to Built to Apex. I'm gonna put this directly behind your seat. <laughs> we get crushed. <laughs> oh, that would fit so easy. Oh my god. It says, it's a little insight. It does not mess around with being useful. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful, simple rundown. This is an eight bolt. This one's five bolts. Right. And we can do six bolts without a problem. Uh, on the bell housing because these two get close to touching those two on, on the bottom. Mm. So I'd rather prioritize having five on this side and six on this side. Okay. If I was in your spot, I would probably double check by seeing how far this is, goes into the flywheel. Right. Uh, and then we'll trim this down and then of course get the bell housing to the correct height. Yeah. And then that determines our final depth of the after plate. Right, 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 right. You wanna do some scanning? Yeah, oh, that'd be Let's fun. Do it. <laughs> So I'll scan all of this yep. and then to here so I can have a reference point and then the back. Well, actually, I might just scan the whole thing on this. Let me get my laptop. Hi, baby girl. <laughs> I love you so very, very much. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Way easy, right? Yeah. First question I was wondering is the resolution. Mm. Most people ask if I can scan their penis for a mold. No way. <laughs> I can't keep it hard that long. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because it's so fast. So. <laughs> I can get more of the bottom when I use it. Mm. Check what thickness we'll need for the adapter. I can uh, see if I have the right material in stock. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? generally happy with the outcome of this. So just shy over an inch. Okay. Uh, if it is an inch, we're just ever so slightly behind it, which is similar to OEM. And I think I do have... Yeah, because when you set, uh, I've taken enough transmission out, when you set the transmission bell housing down, it, it does top, yeah. yeah. So. Okay, so we could get away with an inch. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so let me fuse this and then make sure I have material in stock. 
we are back at Built to Apex. I have probably grown my full beard, shaved that, and then grown it again, and then just fresh off of the new shave. We are currently working on the adapter plate, getting the final design. You're gonna see that things are a little cockeyed. That's the nature of the Turbo 2 bell housing. It is actually slightly offset from center, so you're gonna see bolts not necessarily lining up. That's the point of having a correct adapter. So we're, we're gonna compromise, take some bolt holes out, put some bolt holes in, and cut out an adapter tonight. And just for further reference, you can actually see that even though you'd think the holes all line up, sure enough, slightly offset, and there you go. So just as our concern was, bottom plate is actually level with the ground, and the holes are offset from center. That causes some of the holes on the adapter plate from the torque tube to actually, in one on one side, the holes completely miss each other, and on the other side, they, they collide. This doesn't take up a lot of my processing time because it's a simple, very quick shape. Yeah. Um, so every dark line is the edge of a surface in SolidWorks. When I change these back to the default display, you'll see how many points we're working with. So you gotta read the dark line is uh, an edge? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can't be that much. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> did I make it look super impressive? <laughs> it did. Cool. Encoding the major. <laughs> I'm going in. <laughs> she uses aluminum, steel. <laughs> All I see is what tool am I gonna fuck up this time? <laughs> Happens. We will drill out a bolt pattern in the aluminum and we'll use a cheaper piece of aluminum and then bolt it down and then recontour it so we have a nice outside finish. Oh. But for now, if it's done, it's out, we're gonna test it and see if it's even worth saving. It's fine as yeah, is, yeah, yeah, but it has one more finish pass to go and then the chamfer. So let's clean it, test it. If it's good, we'll jig it back up, chamfer it, maybe lighten it a bit because it's heavy. Yeah. Uh, and then. Um, and then it's done. This is your honor. <laughs> Doesn't look too bad. So we'll just use eights for now, since we don't have tens. And let me grab the socket. I'm super excited. Oh my god! I am too. I'm just like wide eyed, just like, it's beautiful. This is gonna be sweet. Uh, bolt pattern might be a little off, but let me get some more bolts and see. We've upset the gods. <laughs> this was not, we were not supposed to come here. We weren't supposed to do this. Okay, that's not production ready, but it's fucking perfect for the Corvette. Oh so. my God, that is. Bolt pattern's a tiny bit off. I'll have to fix that. Thickness is good. It's exactly where we, we were hoping to go with the, the tip of the pilot. Yep, there, right? yep, yep. Oh, input shaft. Wow. That's pretty fucking awesome. That is really badass. It, it just looks like it. And uh, I mean, we're not measuring this with any kind of sophisticated equipment, but it looks like this plane and this plane if you want to stand back here and judge with me, yeah, it looks like they are one fairly decent, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. It looks like the goal was accomplished with that. So let's take this. That is so sick. That's yeah, what I'm is. talking about. Yeah. Sorry, my hands are dirty. Okay. 
the we've got the maximum number of bolts that you can have on this thing. Mm -hmm. Seven on this side, five on this side with the dowels. So we have seven on both sides, essentially. Seven. How do you have seven on both sides if you only have five on one of them? I'm counting the dowels. It's oh, like, oh, it's, like, oh. it's like support. Yeah, right, 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 right. Being optimistic. I get it. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Yeah. That is literally ready to it fucking ready. put a 13B into the Corvette. So. Wow. This is exciting. That was his prototype piece. That was literally the first piece. First time everything bolts up perfectly. And if you know me, I forget half the bolts. This literally has the most number of bolts on both sides working beautifully. That's the first, that's his first cut and it's the production piece. That's pretty badass. So there you have it, a 13B or really any, any real rotary because if you're gonna adapt it to the Turbo 2 bell housing, which is a pretty useful bell housing, rotary to Corvette, torque tube. You've got the piece right here at Built Apex. Since Nader is a perfectionist, what he's doing right now is creating a, another piece of metal to basically bolt this onto and then refine the outer edge of this. That's not necessary for me, but uh, he's a man who likes to make things look good. And it, look good, it will. That's finally ready. So a little Windex to get the fingerprints off, but there it is. Wow. I'm still posting it as world's first <laughs> ad adapter. <laughs> right. <laughs> Dude, I'm feeling a real negative energy. Vibes. We upset somebody. This wasn't meant to be made. We gotta go. We gotta go. So this, this is not good. We gotta go. We gotta go. Dude, go, 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 go. I'm going. Okay. Something new. Something bad's happening. <laughs> we shouldn't have made this. We've angered the gods. Hopefully we live long enough to be able to make the car. We'll be alright. We'll be alright, dude. Okay. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs>